From tampering with our immune systems to causing facial deformities, here are 11 ways that modern technology is ruining our bodies. Number 11, the immune system. Technology is messing with your immune system. If your body was Gotham City, then your immune system would be Batman. A silent guardian, a watchful protector, the hero you deserve. Even unicellular organisms have rudimentary immune systems, but the structures and the processes for humans are far more complex. Our immune system has the ability of adapting to new pathogens, and it remembers how to fight them for future encounters. This is called acquired immunity. However, our increased reliance on modern medication has made our immune system weaker. Exposure to pathogens, which would otherwise strengthen it, has also diminished. Ultimately, this means that due to advances in medicine, our natural immunity is less equipped to handle diseases on its own. Pop quiz, hot shot! What do you think is the fastest growing allergy in the United States? See if you can guess the correct answer in the comment section and stay tuned till later in the video to see if you're right. Number 10, memory. Your phone is making you real dumb. Why would you need to remember anything since all the information in the world is right in your pocket? When someone introduces themselves to me for the first time, I'll forget their name before they're done saying it. Ask somebody a question they don't know the answer to, and they'll be quicker to draw their phone out than Clint Eastwood in Unforgiven. But is that a good thing? Technology has a negative impact on our memory through something that researchers are now calling digital amnesia. The effect was identified in a 2011 study. It found that we're more likely to forget information that we can easily find through search engines. Digital amnesia might be a lot more harmful in the long run since working memory is an important component of intelligence. Number nine, modified skulls. If we need it, evolution will supply it. That being said, I'm pretty sure that horns in our skulls aren't really necessary at the moment. Yet, they're a consequence of our head posture when interacting with our cell phones. It's not really a Hellboy scenario, but quite strange nonetheless. Because the neck is constantly bent downwards while looking at a screen, bony horn-like structures are beginning to form at the base of the back of our skulls. The tiny horns are called external occipital protuberances, and those who have them can often feel them with their fingers. The bent head places pressure at the point where the skull and neck muscles meet. The skull responds by elongating the bone at its back tip, which is sort of the body's way of saying, hey, I guess you need this. Number eight. A study from Argentina has found that Wi-Fi signals may actually be damaging spooge quality. That's more than worrisome, given that these signals are everywhere. Not only that, but we get frustrated when a network isn't available. Who knew that in our frustration, we're inadvertently increasing our odds of shooting blanks? The study published in Fertility and Sterility took samples from 30 healthy males and placed half under a laptop and the other half somewhere else. More than a quarter of the spunk cells that had been placed under the laptop were damaged and immobile. Number seven, it's pretty safe to say that virtual reality is going to be a major part of our lives in the future. However, before that can happen, one issue that must be dealt with is a condition called VR sickness, also known as cyber sickness, which is history's lamest sounding ailment after carpal tunnel. The symptoms are similar to motion sickness, but may occur through the induced perception of self-motion without the body moving at all. They include headaches, fatigue, vomiting, disorientation, and general discomfort, as well as feeling unsteady when walking or standing. Ignoring these symptoms and continuing to use VR devices may be quite detrimental to your overall health. Number six. Remember face-to-face -face conversations? Yeah, me neither. I'm lonely. It might be best for real conversations to make a comeback since texting is wreaking havoc on our bodies. Excessive texting can lead to joint afflictions, specifically in the fingers and elbows. And it has been associated with joint arthritis. It's a phenomenon that doctors have dubbed texting thumb, in which users have bone and cartilage related ailments in their thumbs. But wait, there's more. Using a cell phone requires the elbows to be bent at a certain angle, which causes nerve compression and pain. The condition known as cell phone elbow occurs when the ulnar nerve that passes through the elbow gets pinched or trapped for extended periods. Number five. Just like how muscles grow by pumping iron, the brain must also build up. Does your brain even lift, bro? 
the brain can definitely be trained. The more you practice an activity, the more apt the brain becomes at predicting the need for it in the future. Therefore, if we check our smartphones every 10 minutes, the brain will eventually remind us to do it within that time frame. This affects our attention span, and before long, the habit will interfere with any activities that require attention. I mean, haven't you ever found yourself to be checking your phone in the middle of doing something with no particular intention? It's like a weird case of amnesia where you wonder where the minutes or even the hours have gone. Studies have found that cell phone addicts use less of the brain regions that deal with focus and need to make greater efforts in order to concentrate on specific tasks. Number four, the dark side of social media. That's right, there's a dark side to social media, and I'm not necessarily referring to people being mean to each other online. FOMO, or fear of missing out, may cause users, specifically teenagers, to check their social media profiles pathologically. They may live under constant fear that they're not included in whatever's happening online. Then there's the issue that likes, shares, and comments have become validation systems and ways for people to compare themselves to each other. In the ensuing competition, it's easy to see how many may begin to feel depressed that they're less popular than others. Although a link between social media and depression hasn't yet been decisively proven, a number of studies seem to lean in that direction. The University of Pennsylvania, for example, split over 100 students into two groups. Out of them, those who use social media less often showed improved mental health and lower levels of depression and loneliness. Then there's the issue of being able to cope with life offline. This is something that Professor David Levy of the University of Washington has dubbed popcorn brain. It describes the link between spending extended periods of time on the internet and diminished cognitive abilities. Number three, smartphones and other gadgets that emit blue light trick our brain into thinking that it's daytime. This leads to lower secretions of melatonin, a hormone that tells the body it's bedtime. This aspect, coupled with the sounds and vibrations from messages or notifications, can definitely interfere with a good night's sleep. Also, staring at a screen for hours on end can lead to fatigue, headache, dry eyes, light sensitivity, and double vision. So I guess the proper thing to say would be good night, sleep tight, and don't let the megabytes bite. No? Fine. I guess another megabyte bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. Number two. Myopia or nearsightedness is another consequence of the way in which we interact with technology. Since many children and teenagers prefer leisure activities that involve PCs, gaming consoles, or TV streaming services, they tend to spend more time indoors. And this means that they're away from natural sunlight, which is very important for the proper development of the eyes. Myopia levels are on the rise in Europe, South Korea, and the US. In China, almost 90% of teenagers suffer from some form of myopia. If current trends continue, it's believed that by 2020, one third of the world's population will suffer from myopia. This is definitely an issue to keep an eye on, but one that might be reversed just by exposing children to at least three hours of natural sunlight every single day. It's answer time. According to the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology, the fastest growing allergy in America is food allergy. Since 2010, peanut allergies among children has increased 21% and approximately 2% of American children suffer from an allergic reaction to peanuts. Before we move on, be sure to subscribe. Hit the bell button to get notified of new videos and we always appreciate a big thumbs up. Number one, the foods that children consume influence the ways in which their jaws, skulls, and faces develop. Since many young children nowadays eat processed foods, it sometimes leads to deformities in their bone structure. Natural foods have more nutrients and are tougher to chew, which influences facial development and increases jaw and skull strength. Processed foods often eliminate the necessity for chewing, which leads to weaker jaws. Our dependence on processed foods has reduced skull size by 5 to 10% from the average of our Paleolithic ancestors. It's a process that has been observed in the animal kingdom as well. Young animals raised in captivity and reared on processed foods have more jaw problems than those in the wild. Does your brain even lift, bro? <laughs> That's a good one. Does your brain even lift, bro? Ha, 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 ha.
may cause users, particularly, I get that word kills me, particularly, why is that word so hard? Particularly, particularly, particularly may cause users, particularly teenagers, may cause users, particularly teenagers, may cause users, specifically teenagers, stay tuned till later in the video to see if you're right. Wow, that was a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, I, wow. I know. I know. I, I literally, like, that was the last bit I had. I didn't have another syllable in me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>